Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you saw yesterday's one then you'll remember that I had this graphics card come out of an old $50 system that I found online. Now I didn't know what was inside it at first, I just purchased it and it turns out that this GT240 was the graphics card that occupied the motherboard. Since then however I realised I made a slight mistake because this card actually features GDDR5 instead of DDR3 VRAM and so with that said I just had to test it out again. After I realised that there was potentially a lot more room for overclocking, there are the specs there just to recap if you didn't see yesterday's video. And because this is a 70 watt card, it means that it doesn't require an additional power connector and will work in most systems, although I do believe a 400 watt PSU is needed. Now I wanted to replace the thermal paste first of all because I doubt that it's been changed ever since this card was released and this is a very simple process, simply undo the force screws to remove the heatsink, remove the thermal paste from both the GPU and the heatsink itself, again which is a very simple process and it should just wipe off like so, although you may need to find yourself some rubbing alcohol in order to do the job. Once you're done with that it should come up nice and shiny as this example has done here and reapplying thermal paste could not be simpler just like a CPU, apply a little bit in the middle although you want to use a little bit less than you would with a processor but using the same thermal paste that you would do on a processor is absolutely fine and once you're done you can sit the heatsink back on and then you can go ahead and screw the card back together some random toast there just I don't know why I left that in but I did and there we have it so the system I'll be using the GT240 in today is my personal Ryzen 3 build replacing my GTX 1060 for the day so removing a graphics card is very simple especially if you installed it yourself it's just one or two screws as well as the removal of the PCI Express power connector there which obviously will not be required for this 70 watt card which will just slot in nicely and should be ready to fire up. So on the desktop here and you'll see the stock speeds, the 550MHz core clock, the 1340MHz shader clock and the 1700MHz memory clock there. I did manage to overclock this to 640 MHz with a 1559 MHz shader clock and a 1950 MHz memory clock as well. This was the absolute limit that I could push this thing and as you can see there it remained pretty cool at 43 degrees on idle. So it's time to get into some games. One popular title a lot of you have been asking me for is Paladins which ran at 1080p with the low settings to average 55 frames per second and as you can see from those other figures there they're really wasn't much lag or stutter to speak of and I had a lot of fun playing this game. Up next it's CSGO again with the low settings but I don't really feel the need to turn the settings up anymore in this game and a lot of you guys told me that as well. This averaged out at 60 frames per second especially when you consider that we played a variety of different maps here and once again looking at the 1% and 0.1% lows you can see there really was not much stutter to speak of. As we moved on to Far Cry 3 we had to switch the resolution to 720p here again keeping those low settings but we did average 50 fps and the game was definitely more than playable and I had a great experience with Far Cry 3 a game that I really haven't played since my Xbox 360 days of gaming. Now you may remember yesterday I said that GTA 5 kept crashing well I managed to get it working today with an average of 30 frames per second on the absolute minimum settings but Looking at those other figures, you can see that there was quite a bit of stutter here, which really rendered the game unplayable in some situations, although it performed a lot better in the countryside areas. So to end the day, we rounded the gameplay tests off with Minecraft, which at 1080p ran with 90 frames per second, a great experience in my opinion, and although Minecraft is more CPU intensive, it couldn't have done it without the help of that GT240. So there we have it. It is an old card and it doesn't support DirectX 11 anymore, but if you're looking for something to put in an older system at a great cheap price, they can be found for as low as £10 or $15 you could do a lot worse than one of these low powered and relatively cheap GT240 GPUs. Thanks for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.